Worship Podcast. Worship leaders, friends, and pastors, so glad that you guys came into the Worship Team Training Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we ask for those of you who are new or maybe you've been listening for a long time, please hit the subscribe button for this podcast. Welcome to all of our Worship Team Training University members watching us by video. So awesome to have you. We're getting the band back together, or maybe for some of you, it's going to be a few months away or a few weeks away. I know worship teams uh, during this COVID experience era thing that we're in, they may not be going back until December. But no matter if you're going back this Sunday or if you're going back maybe later on in a few months, these are some tips and some things that we can do in the meantime before we get back as we get the band back together. Thanks so much for coming back to and checking out WTTU.co, our university site, and also, as I said, uh, the podcast here on iTunes and Spreaker. And this broadcast is also brought to you by our good friends at Faith Life and Proclaim Presentation Software. Go to ProclaimOnline.com where presentations for your church are made easy. And... Uh, Continue to check out what we have at our events page at WTTU.co. Enroll, check out the new subscription plans that we have just for you. And as far as our devotional that you can pick up, just cruise on over to worshipteentraining.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you will get that devotional sent your way. All right, so let's get right back to it. We're on a mission from God. We're getting the band back together. So what are some things that we can do when we get our bands back together? This can be something for us that may seem a little bit daunting because we've been so disconnected in a way. We've been away from our worship teams. I know for me, it's just been like, uh, I feel like I'm on an island right now. I, I can't wait to get back with my team. We're actually rehearsing this coming Thursday and going into Sunday to lead worship. So it's just going to be us, just a band only on stage. We're all going to be, you know, in our protective measures. But, um, I'm really looking forward to getting back and just, you know, being in the music and, and being with one another. So I hope that's the same thing for you. And if it's not, and maybe you're still streaming from home, or maybe you're waiting to stream and you're waiting to still get things set up, I really believe that today's tips for you in this podcast will engage and help motivate your creativity, as well as some things that you can do to rearrange for your band. So I got three points, and they're big, big, major points. So let's go ahead and get right to them right now. Number one, team trouble. What do I mean by this? Uh, trouble. Have you been checking on your team to find out how they're doing? Okay, maybe they're not in trouble. Maybe things are okay. But I know some worship teams and leaders that are going through some very desperate times right now. So that's kind of why I've named it as such. Uh, call them. Text them. See how they're doing. Check on maybe their family members because... You know, when you ask them if everything's okay, they may not be telling you that they have a brother in Iowa or a sister in Omaha or somewhere else. You know, find out some ways that you can pray, that you can uh, minister to their need, not just ask them, hey, are you ready to go for Sunday when we get back? You know, really build into the relationships. I've spent time with our worship leader, one of our worship leaders last week, she and her husband too. They're going through they're going through their own times with their extended family. And so all of us are going through something. So I think, you know, I, I know for me at least in this COVID era, there are a lot of good things that we're going to be taking back with us, I, I believe. I'm going to jump into more of that in a little bit. But connect the disconnectedness, basically, with your team. And also give them vision. Give them some new inspiring thoughts of some things that they are going to be looking for forward to. Now, maybe you haven't thought about that yet, but I'm sure like a lot of the worship leaders that we speak with, they're looking through all the new songs, uh, namely Elevation's new album, Love It, uh, Graves Into Gardens. You know, there, there are a lot of things that you could be doing right now, checking off new songs. You could be looking through the songs and hearing maybe some of the things that are happening within the band. Find out what others are doing right now within their streaming services. Maybe make a checklist for you to discover some things that you need to be giving your band in terms of, you know, if it's vision casting, like here's some things we're going to do for this season while we're still either streaming or just getting back with the team. Here are some things that are happening in the church. Here are some things that we're going to be doing throughout the rest of this year. It may be a slower progression for you, but if you can give your people some vision, 
that's going to help really the backbone and making of the ministry as opposed to just, you know, let's just get back together and just do the music week in and week out. And, and then you kind of slip back into the old habits of the way things were. I don't think any of us right now want to go back to the way things were in the sense of, I don't mean the normalcy, but I just mean, uh, I know for me, it's just been like before the pandemic, there were just crazy things going on. So this era, this this pause that we've had during COVID actually has done a lot. I really believe that for me, it's helped me to become quieter. It's helped me to become more contemplative of what I do, not as a minister, or worship leader, pastor, but as a father, as a husband. I'm, as I said in our last show, I've been spending a lot more time than what's normal for us as a family. We spend time every night together, but it's like now we're just watching more movies. Uh, we're, we're also eating more, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but we're doing a lot more things like, like you know, we went to the lake uh, twice in a row and there's no one out there. It was just fantastic, you know? So I'm bringing back to my team, I, I think I'm bringing back to my team a sense of pause, a sense of this rediscovering who God is. What are you bringing back? What are the things that you can connect with your team? That's what I ask of you. We're told this in Hebrews 10, 24, the writer says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Guys, these are the things that God is teaching us right here. I mean, right now you have this opportunity as you're listening and as you're watching to be filled with what God is doing through you, moving fresh waves in and out. Uh, maybe you have stories of what's happening with your family and the community. Um, some good things. If you watched our show about two, three weeks ago, I did an episode called Good News. So what are some good news? What are some good things that God has been doing that you can take back to your worship team? So let us stir up the goodness with our teams. Point number two. Okay, so the practice politics. All right, what does that mean? No, I don't mean the politics within government or even within your church. But when it comes to practice time within your own uh, doing, you know, there there is the politics of, well, are you practicing the, the, the words and thoughts coming your way of, man, I haven't been practicing like I should. We play these political games in our mind about what's good, what's not. Am I practicing? Am I not? Do I feel guilty? <laughs> so the question is, who is really practicing within your team? Now, if you're a worship leader, worship pastor, you're probably asking that question right now. Is my drummer really practicing? They got all this time at home. They're doing all this COVID stuff, but are they locking themselves away to practice just a few minutes? Well, that's part of your duty is to check on them, as I said in the last point, see how they're doing with the practice time. But how do you stay sharp during this time of this COVID era? What are you doing to stay sharp? How are you making the most of your time? It's very easy for all of us right now. This is hard. Let me just say, you know, trying to volunteer or lead a worship team, lead a church right now, I think is tougher than ever because we're in this uh, I don't know stage. I don't know what's going to happen in the end. I don't know what's happening now. I don't know how we got here. I don't even remember how things were before. All these different mixture uh, of ideas and memories and anticipations of what to come. I know for me, I've been overwhelmed also. So I have to keep myself sharp. It's very easy for us to get overwhelmed by the, the work involved, the, not even to mention the homeschooling, right? For all you teachers out there that are trying to teach through us parents, wow. I mean, I have an incredible respect for what teachers do. And thank you, teachers, for the way that you teach your children and the way that you help lead our schools. I tell you what, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so I'm trying to pick up the pieces to help our children. But it's like, you know, then, the, then it comes to practice time. Well, wait a minute, practice time. What? Well, okay, what is that? I've been practicing math and geometry with our nine-year-old, you know. What does it mean, Brandon, when you talk about practicing with your music? I haven't even picked up a guitar or keyboard in the past eight weeks. Well, dust it off, get it out from the corners, and put some music in front of you. Now, we have some tutorials here at WTTU.co to lead you through this era, and we're putting out new charts and new tools coming, but even right now, you can sign up for like the, the free plan, and you can find some videos of um, music instruction. 
the whole idea is that you do something, even if it's like, you know, find a really good video on YouTube, um, download a good article, but do something to get your practice time back. And, you know, for me, I say 10 minutes a day. It doesn't take much to practice. It really doesn't. Don't think about, well, but I got to do this and this today. And I and then, and then it comes to the, yeah, but I don't have a whole hour to devote myself a day. You're so right. None of us have an hour. But you can probably find at least 10 minutes somewhere. Maybe it's waking up very early than anybody else in the home. And maybe as you spend your time with God and after you spend time in the Word um, or before the Word, play or sing and just use that as your worship time to God. I mean, that's practice time right there. Uh, maybe carve out 10 minutes at the end of the day, or maybe at lunch, whatever, whatever works for you, but you got to find that sweet spot. So I say all this as well. Um, when it comes to music, we did this in band. We did this in choir. It's called fingering, fingering through your music. I encourage you to do that with your charts. If maybe you're really rusty right now and you don't feel like playing, just get a music chart out. Just get a chord chart or a lead sheet, and with your finger, just go over the notes while you listen to the MP3 playback at the same time, and just familiarize with what's going on. You Before you know it, you're going to be wanting to grab that instrument and pick it up and start playing. And also, I would do this. With the new songs or songs that your leader is putting out each week, make a playlist. And as you make that playlist, play it out every day. Make it a, a daily routine habit to empower yourself and to help you get into the groove musically that way instead of the rut of what we're in right now with this COVID thing. Very easy to fall into. But I say push yourself. Push yourself. Try practicing with a click when you get that 10 minutes alone time. Guitar, drums, bass, keyboard, vocal. Yes, vocals as well. Practice with a click. Have a steady metronome on. You can download easily from uh, to your phone, your iPad, whatever. And... There's billions of free apps out there, so you're without excuse. But get your music, your chart, and set that metronome, that click on, and just start hammering away, practicing. Also, what about zooming up a buddy? Uh, you could have somebody within your team. You could know somebody across the state or another part of the world. And zoom them up and just say, hey, can we practice together? I mean, you never know how much fun you can create and have just on your own. You may be a drummer. Uh, zoom up your bass player, uh, guitarist with your singers, with, um, practice some harmonies, you know, w among your vocal group. Uh, there's many different things you can do. And, and what, when you connect with your people, that's an, again, you're doing point number one, you're connecting with people. And now you're becoming more and more inspired of what they're doing with their instrument and with what you're doing. Uh, vocally. So try those things. Also, uh, learn new music techniques. So that means like, uh, things like the Nashville number system. Now, if you look at our downloads page at WTTU.co, I have the Nashville number system listed out there. You can download it, but figure out what that is and just start identifying the chords in the song. Now, maybe I'm going too fast. Maybe some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, Brandon, I don't even know what the Nashville number what? What is that? Okay, so that just gives you another reason to dive deeper into music and to discover these things, and we're here to help you. Moving on, try reading up another instrument as well. How about learning what the bass player does more, or the drummer, or what vocals have to go through to warm up their voices? You never know how much uh, education that when you give that to yourself, you can apply that in other areas of your own preferred instrument. 1 Corinthians 9.27 says this, Now I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Now Paul is meaning that I, I discipline my body so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. In other words, we discipline ourselves by the things that God has given us, like practicing our music, staying sharp, working on our skills. There is nothing else that's better than honing in on the gift that God has given us because we're serving Him and people in a greater way. So this is the other reason of why we are to stay sharp. So we have every responsibility that we take to discipline and protect and grow the skills that God's given us. Next point, ridiculous. Okay, what is that? No, ridiculous. Rehearsal ridiculous is where I'm going. What does that mean? Uh, it's just ridiculous that we can even have rehearsals right now at this point, right? You may be streaming. You may uh, be rehearsing live with your team, zooming them up, 
no matter what, uh, where you are. You could be preparing for your rehearsal that you're going to have live in person like we are. And even though we're the only, we're actually the only worship team and uh, the only people inside that building on Sunday, we're still gathering together to rehearse. But it's just ridiculous, yes, to do it during these times. Also, the feelings of disconnectedness. And what do we do at rehearsal? It's been so long now since we've gotten together with our team. Maybe those of you are waiting to do your first rehearsal, and you may have many weeks or months away. So these are some things that you can do to keep yourself on task and make those rehearsals maximized and smooth. Number one, I say keep it simple, not stupid. In other words, set your agenda and just keep it loose. Have, you know, instead of maybe putting 10 songs up there on the list that you want to do, maybe just to try, uh, achieve to do seven or try five. And keep things simple, so not complicated. Don't try to hang the moon at every rehearsal and go through every technique that you can. Just cover the basics. And I say, <clears throat> excuse me, use familiar songs. So maybe your first time back or your, it's your second time rehearsal, do songs that everybody knows. The last thing that you want to do is pull out a brand new song that no one's looked at. And it's been all these eight weeks now that we've been held in captivity. And now they're trying to learn a new song on top of it. That's way too much stress. I would just do some simple tunes and just make it easy. Push for the new one that you want to do in maybe two weeks from now. Uh, look at some new material with your team. Maybe use that time at the end of the rehearsal instead of playing the new songs for your for your um, you playing it as a team, maybe just let the MP3 do it or YouTube, and just say, "Hey guys, we're just going to listen to this new song," and that way there's no pressure to play, there's no pressure to perform. Uh, people can just do it at their leisure during your time together. Most of all, have fun. Have fun at your rehearsal. Don't worry about the things that you feel like you should be doing um, or you want to accomplish. You know, A to Z in in a given hour. But remember this. You, you want to spend your hour and a half or two hours of rehearsal wisely. Don't even try to do like a three-hour rehearsal. That's not a rehearsal. That's that's like a um, that's that's a bad retreat. Okay. You want to make sure that you keep things on task, simple. Use your time wisely. I say this for you, worship leaders and pastors. Plan out your rehearsal. This is something that I teach at our weekend workshops. I I teach leaders to go through every instance of their songs and map out like you know get your list if it's planning center online whatever and mark off to the side of each song let's say you got seven songs to do and then to each song i'm going to put like five minutes here the next song i'm going to do maybe three minutes here and then so forth per song also map out per song what you want to do is it working on the verse is it maybe we need to fix that bridge going back to the chorus section, and we're going to spend two minutes on that. And then when you complete that practice, uh, uh, complete that rehearsal section, move on to the next practiced item, the next rehearsal song, and then move yourself all the way down to that list. And always, this is what I say as well, start with the hardest songs first, the easiest songs at the bottom. So that way, you're working on just a few minutes here, the most difficult parts at the top of your order. You move to the next song that gets a little easier. The next song gets a little easier. And then run the whole thing, your rehearsal from top to bottom, covering all the songs. That will really help maximize your time together as a team. It'll keep you on task. And also, when people start to fellowship and talk a lot, you can say, hey, guys, remember, we need to get back to that course again and before we finish out for the night we, uh, let's go ahead and just make an easy run through these are some simple things that you can do on your own and even just chart it out and uh, see how it looks like for yourself when you're planning out your rehearsal during the week so spend time doing that anything that you can do to keep things fluid and consistent is going to help your team members when you get to that rehearsal all right now to recap we talked about this, connecting with your people, making sure that you're checking on them, checking on their family, um, also zooming them up for a practice time maybe. Keep them and yourself sharp. So work on music 10 minutes a day. Find out some new things that you can do within what you're studying. Push yourself. Learn new material. Learn new songs. Maybe learn a new instrument. Keep your rehearsal simple, as I just said. Make things honorable for your team and, and to honor their time instead of just making it complicated. 
Lastly, have fun family Sunday. So when it's time to worship, it's time to gather, whether it's by stream or whether it's in person. Make it fun. Remember this too. Your church just wants to connect and worship. They just want to be led, and they want to have songs that they can sing with. So that's another reason why you don't need to worry about doing all the brand new albums that are out right now that you've been seeing during COVID. I mean, there's some awesome tunes that I found too, but I want to introduce things slowly so that way the congregation and the church, they feel comfortable. And you as a team, you feel comfortable. And as you do that, you have a lot more fun. So guys, I hope that these tips work for you. And to finish out with our last scripture verse coming from Philippians 2.2, then make my joy complete, Paul says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. The more that we do this, the more that we are of one mind and the more fun that we can have, then we're able to get the band back together and we're able to have fun while we do it. So make that your call. Make that your vision as you move towards the new horizon that God's working and bringing up together as we come back together as a church. So I pray that these tips for you today were encouraging, that they gave you some more creativity, some more things to think about. Hit me up, Brandon at worshipteentraining.com or Brandon at WTTU.co and let us know how these tips have made a difference within your rehearsal time, within gathering and getting your band back together. And as always, guys, thanks so much for subscribing to this podcast. We ask, would you give us a five-star rating and leave us a comment on iTunes? And most of all, share this podcast out with a friend. Those who need to hear it, your team members, those who need to feel connected and encouraged, get them back together, share this with them, and thanks so much. We love you, and guys, remember, you don't need to be perfect. Just let the Lord Jesus lead you both in life and in worship. We'll see you back next time. Love you. Thank you.